Welcome to my first actual episode of Star Maid, and I have with me a almost two scale Kushan Scout from Homeworld 1. I, I built it more off the original design than any of the remastered designs. So that, that includes, uh, there's a Homeworld 2 mod that was popular for a little while way back when, and it uh, improved all of the textures, and I thought sometimes I use that as a basis too, not just uh, the new remastered one or the uh, uh, that modded remastered one, but usually I use uh, the originals because I, I mean, it works a lot better with Star Made because of the more, uh, like, how would I describe it, blocky, blockiness. So I'm going to throw up an image here, if you guys do not know what that is, and I mean, as I said, this is pretty much to scale. What is awesome about Star Made is I can actually recreate something in it, and it totally works as it would in Homeworld. I mean, Star Made is such a dynamic game for making starships from your favorite games or your own starships, and I'm going to try to build a lot from Homeworld. And I'm starting here with the Kushan Scout because it's simple and I was giving it a try and man, do I like it. Um, I had a, a little bit of a different version before. So this will be version 1.1 and I'll throw a download to it once I figure out how to do that for Star Maid. And uh, I made that version before they did the whole update with Thrust and how you control thrusting, and that totally changed how the scout was working, so I had to redesign it a bit. But it resulted, uh, along with the uh, dark gray pieces, I really like how they added that in, so I was able to give it a little bit more, a uh, couple more characteristics with the darker gray armor. Uh, but yeah, this, as you can see, I put a lot of time into this little guy <laughs> uh, to make it as accurate as possible. I mean, this is actually s probably slightly bigger than it would be uh, in actual homeworld relative to the size of a human. And I'm going to throw this into the... this is a, currently a hologram. I'm going to go into the test sector. Uh, one issue with this scout right now is you always spawn like that, and I really don't know how to fix that. But once I uh, align myself to gravity and whatnot, I can easily get out of there. And that's why the gravity thing is right next to the core. Uh, and a future version of that scout, that might be fixed a little bit better. I have really trashy space station, so I don't even know what I'm doing here. Uh, anyways, uh, let's... Uh, uh, uh. Let's test this out and bring it up against a couple of different enemies. Um, I actually have the interceptor pretty much complete already, so you'll be seeing that here soon. Uh, plans for next one is I'm going to make my all-time favorite, although it's not my all-time favorite, but it's one of my favorite designs, the Assault Frigate, of course, for the Titan. Now, that's going to be a massive ship. I'll probably have to create that in creative mode because the this is currently in survival, actually, and I just don't have the size of a shipyard to build that at the moment. But yeah, this thing is a capable of about 270 meters per second with the overdrive online. Uh, the scanner just hogs power for some reason. So I need to wait for that to recharge until I can actually do anything. So scanner what you would use uh, when you're not around enemies and you're just trying to scan the vicinity because it really just takes away all your power. Now you can see it regenerating pretty quickly there. So let's go full speed. And it's just at... or it just barely makes... or actually I don't even think it does. It just, yeah. <laughs> you see that? It was at... Uh, let's try again crazy test sector logic throwing me around it just barely doesn't get 270 it's like 269.7 it's ridiculous 0.2 <laughs> but either way uh, this I mean as I said this is as I start talking in detail about the ship you'll find that it's basically the homeworld scout it's just transformed to be in star made it originally, in the original version of this, had a hyperdrive, just because Star Made. But because of this thrust update, and I can go much quicker, I took out the hyperdrive for the sake of getting more speed in this thing. I mean, it accelerates pretty quickly. I'll try to kill some speed here. 
Uh, we'll see how fast it actually accelerates, and I'll... I'd say it's almost, uh... Close to 20 meters per second. Uh, the guns is basically what you would expect it. Fully auto. Uh, let's see, let's look at this. 100% backed up uh, double cannon. And it can it can do okay amount of damage. I mean, it's a scout, so I didn't make it uh, revolve around its gun. It revolves around its overdrive and its speed. Uh, uh, it has an ion effect here in case you're in combat with other ships that are spraying bullets at you and you want to take a bunch of those like the ion effect normally helps a lot when there's a bunch of bullets being sprayed at you and you want to take a percentage out of all those bullets onto your energy instead of your shields the shields on the scout is fairly weak uh, we also have a stop Com effect computer here, which isn't really made to be on its own, but I guess you could use it on its own. I really don't know how well that would work for the scout. But uh, it's made to go with the cannons if you want to hook it up, to transfer it, transfer a little bit of the damage into stopping effect. And why would I have that? Well, in Homeworld 2, the scouts had an EMP effect where it would sort of stun the other ships. And I thought that was really cool. So I decided to have that as an option if you want to quickly throw on the stop effect. If not, and you want the extra percent of damage, just put the stop effect back on the ship core, and you get a little bit more extra damage with these guys. I also have a salvage computer because Star made, uh, not necessarily accurate to Homeworld. And I have this here, uh, a beam cannon slaved to it, because uh, if I'm thinking of a scout, I would think of it quickly going in to get something and getting out as quick as possible. So I have the beam thing hooked up because it makes it, uh, the cannon have to reload longer, or yeah, cannon salvage thing reload longer, but it harvests very quickly and for a certain period of time longer than without it slaved. So in effect it'd be used if you have to really go grab something you're just going to suck up a bunch of resources quickly and get away. Uh, that is when this would come into play, having this as the slave. So let's stop here and have a look around inside, which I always have issues with. Because <laughs> it keeps wanting to kick me out here from having a smaller interior. Uh, this is really all the interior is. I just have this back room. Uh, oh, actually, I forgot to have... I'll be putting two storage blocks here, and the back here is where most of the computers are. Uh, this upper area here, and we'll have the front here too, you can see that this is standard armor. The rest of the ship is basically just hull, because the scout isn't supposed to be a really heavily armored ship. So there's only standard armor in the front because that's where you're going to be getting hit the most if you're flying at something, and uh, all of your computers are right here. So this will at least shield you from a couple of hits. Uh, for a little while. Unless you're going face front into some sort of ion cannon. Oof. That probably, your ship probably wouldn't survive. Because this thing, it just eat through your shields and then eat through you. But it's got to hit you because you are going to be speedy. Uh, I don't know what. Okay. Um, I tried to get the details to be pretty fancy. Actually, I tried to get the bottom to be as accurate as possible too. I found it on the old Relic website screenshots of it from like different angles and I was able to get the bottom pretty much correct too. So yeah, let's bring this thing into some combat. Uh, we'll bring it against an Isanth, however you might pronounce that. So I might as well just activate this gravity. There we go. Yay, gravity. Uh, yeah, this is such a fancy control room. <laughs> uh, all of these actually brace you from the outside, so I only was able to put one thing there to at least make it look like something. That might change a little bit in the future if I get a better design, but for now it's kind of a boring cockpit. So let's spawn something here. 
and I gotta remember how to do that. Alright, I just spawned an Isanth with just beams. Now, we're on pretty easy. I think we're on normal easy. Or, not the pretty easy, but easy. So, it probably won't be too hard to at least get this guy. So, I just love to spray bullets with the scout. I mean, it's, it's actually rather fun. So, this guy is actually still a decent threat to me, even though he's a beam. Because if I get hit by his beams, I'm going to lose my shields rather quickly. If he actually gets it for... A long period of time as you can see my shields are going down pretty quickly and that was only two hits so in a scout you really want to be careful not to get hit and that's pretty much how it'd be in homeworld which i think is i mean it's awesome because i mean i'm basically driving the scout i'd also suggest turning off the overdrive effect while you're in combat because uh it just slowly hogs power and you usually don't go that quickly and as you can see i'm struggling a bit here to keep power up so i'm gonna Fly out here and regenerate a bit of power. Shoot a bit. I don't really know how fast these or how far these bullets go. Man, I'm really struggling for power. Maybe I should try to upgrade that a wee bit. So my shields are already down, and I'm getting glitched out by a piece here. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be a little weird because the guns aren't like. Uh, I guess in a say, I guess I'd call it uh, symmetrical because they're on your side here. You get used to it after a little bit, and actually, I mean, it feels like you're in a scout and it's really cool, but it can throw you off a bit at first if you're not used to non symmetrical guns on your ship. Now, I am just going in for the kill here. <laughs> Once you actually start hitting with the scout, it can do a serious amount of damage because those bullets just keep coming and coming and coming. Like right now, I don't know why he's not turning around. AI is always a little bit questionable. But hey, I'm doing some serious damage, and that's what matters. Now, this guy is going to hurt me. Oh boy. I mean, I've already got a hole blown through the my face here. But I think I'll be able to come out successful on this. I'm already doing a lot more damage than he is. I'm not sure why he's not firing at me. Maybe I, like, wrecked his computer or something, which would be very fortunate. I mean, I can basically keep my gun on full auto if I'm not moving or engaging my engines. Now, when I engage my engines, it's a little bit slower there, and then I fire. So, kind of have to build some interesting tactics how to use the scout properly. Now issues start occurring once he starts hitting your gun, because then sometimes it's enough that it damages enough pieces that you can no longer penetrate uh, advanced armor. That that can happen actually rather quickly. And then if it's bad enough, you won't be able to penetrate regular armor, and you can only penetrate hull, and that's, that's pretty bad. And what I'd suggest there is to take off uh, the... Uh, Oh, I already got hit somewhere. Oh, boy. Once you have the upper hand in the scout, I mean, I can just tear away through the armor, and it just eats everything inside from all these bullets. And he probably has lost his weapons. So, I mean, if a human was in this, he probably would have been able to overcome me and pretty much destroying me in the scout. I mean, the scout is not made for combat, it's made for speed and having at least somewhat of a gun and for the scanner there. So, oh boy, he still has weapons. At least my shields are holding up here a bit. I mean, my scout is probably going to look rather miserable after this battle because I can already see I'm missing quite a few blocks in the front here. I'm surprised none of my computers in the back have gotten hit yet. As you can see, I do not have my computer loaded right now because I am just trying to get as much damage as possible. I don't want to have any small percentage taken away to stop him. That is not my goal right now. Oh, you know what I could have had? I could have had my on effect computer on. But although I already have a low amount of power, so I might 
devote a little bit of the insides to less storage of power and more regeneration of power. Uh, I just took a huge hit there. Probably take out some of the... I added on some more ion effect computers because they weren't very effective before. Or computers, uh, modules. But I might take some out again just for the sake of power regeneration because that seems to be the major issue with this 1.1 version. So you'll probably get a 1.2 in the download. The computers for the guns are farther inside the ship, just so then they're protected. So as you can see, I still have not lost my computers. I seem to have taken multiple hits already. That's because they're deeper inside the power, uh, power things that give you energy. I'm surprised this guy hasn't really caved in yet, because I am still just kind of eating away at the front of him here. I wonder if he's actually trying to shoot out my weapons right now. I'm gonna try to shoot out his, how about that? At this point, my shields have overcome his ability to really damage me. His guns are pretty much gone. And I'm just mining him out until he dies. So, I'd call this a victory on my part, but even on very easy, once we get out of my ship, it, we've taken 20% of all of our blocks have been destroyed. And that's a pretty significant amount for just one battle against a easy Isanth with just beams, which I'd consider a medium threat. But even then, if again, if a human was driving this, I'd probably be dead right now. <laughs> and finally, there we go. Now I'll show you what I mean by this. Uh, salvage is I can just get in here and let's say I like the armor, quickly sap it up with this salvaging beam. And then uh, it doesn't take too long to reload, actually. And let's see. Let's see if there's something specific in here that I could grab. Let's say I want those engines. I mean, this thing just quickly sucks them up. I'm a scout. Let's say I'm in the middle of a battle with another guy and get out of here. So. I'd say that's a little rough. <laughs> uh, we actually lost quite a bit of our guns here. But even then... Uh, the setup I have with the guns is actually kind of cool because it will still continue to fire with two bullets because the outside ones are the... This layer and this layer is made to fire, and then these two layers inside uh, support them. So no matter how much damage you do to this amount, it will always shoot two bullets at that same speed, or about the same speed, depending on how much damage you take to the secondaries. But I mean, most... Even though we're facing him, and he was obviously shooting in this direction, uh, the main system's upheld, and we were able to get out of that battle alive, and with everything... Uh, actually, let's see if, if we had storage containers up here. What have they been intact? I'm not too sure. <laughs> I might put the storage containers a little bit farther back next time. Oh! Yeah, these two areas right here, that's where the storage containers would have been. I might just put them back here, though, for the sake of safety, because as you can see, they're surrounded by a little bit of better armor. So yeah, that's the scout. Uh, so beautiful looking. Huh. Uh, let's actually see how the engines did back here. I mean, they're in the back, and there's a, this is actually almost almost double armored because it's a triangle, and in a fair amount of it, there's also a square beneath it just to protect the engines. So the engines didn't take too much damage because that's really the big piece of the scout. So it's a decent ship, and uh, it's got those engines. Now, of course, that's it doesn't go the fastest possible in the game, but then if I were to make it the fastest, as fast as it could possibly go, that'd be a lot of engines back here, and I would have I would have hardly any gun ability or anything outside of the engines. Kind of interesting how they balance that out, but it's still pretty fast of a ship. Uh, so yeah, I'll perform a couple upgrades before I post it because I think it needs a storage definitely and. A little bit better power generation because as you can see I've got a couple of areas that are just uh, 
need to store power, and that was because originally I had the hyperdrive in, and those aren't really helpful now, because I don't really, I didn't really have a moment where having that stored power was that much of a help. So it's going to be mostly converted to just uh, power modules. So yeah, next time you'll see the Interceptor, and after that, probably a much larger ship. We'll see how that goes.